we, if, if we don't stand up and fight back against those things, we're screwed. Yeah. So, so the choice is uh, get organized. Be screwed or be screwed. Well, no. <laughs> right? uh, you, know, you, you fight and organize the union, some of you get fired, uh, then the union struggle continues. Then when you get the union the contract, you sue the shit out of the university, and you uh, not only get your job back, but you get a big uh, bunch of money for all that time that you didn't were able to work. Um, I'm not saying that's not a, a, a hell of a risk. But in the, but in the but meantime, in the meantime, how do I put gas in my car and how do I feed my kids? There's not an answer for in the meantime. The answer is you have to get organized and fight back. It just, it's not feasible for the poor. It's just not feasible for the poor. If, if I may, um, Nepal, uh, literally filled with absolute poverty. Um, they, they're also a labor surplus country. Nepal exports laborers to India and Southeast Asia and the Middle East, and a lot of the Nepali economy is based on the money that those people send back. But even though they are incredibly poor, they have organized unions, and their unions are strong enough to sometimes uh, you know, riot, sometimes get the contracts, and sometimes to actually take over factories or schools or you know, other workplaces. It seems to me that if people who are will literally starve to death, I mean, here we have food stamps, and that's that's not a lot of money on food stamps. Um, and here we have shelters, and they're poorly funded, and it's terrible to live there. Uh, there they have nothing. You will literally starve to death in the streets of Kathmandu, and no one will feed you or help you except for your comrades in the other union. If they can do that, and risk literally their lives. For single men without children, I would agree with you. I think that's just fine. But when you are a mother, as many, many Utah women are, because we're taught from the time we're teeny tiny that our entire goal in our lives is to become grown-ups and get married and have babies, that it doesn't work for Utah women. It doesn't work for us. Because we would not see our children starve to death or live in, oh, what shelter? There's not one in Utah County. There's not a, a shelter for any, any homeless people in Utah County. Um, it is worth noting that at least uh, 40, it's 40 to 45% of the Maoists in Nepal uh, are women. And they have children just like everyone else. The Indian Maoists who are currently forming unions and struggling um, Operation Green Hunt, they are literally struggling against the military and paramilitary of, um, of India, financed by Israel. Uh, yeah, and trained by Israel. Um, the People's Liberation Guerrilla Army, which is the force in India, is at least 35% women, and many of them are combat troops. Um, yeah, you know what? Single men without children also need to help organize. And I would imagine that many of the TAs here are single men without children and they need to also join the program. Um, but I think, I think the I've got kids doesn't work. Every time there's been struggle, people have had kids. The, the Russian revolutionaries, they all had kids. Um, the Chinese revolutionaries, they all had kids. Today in India and Nepal, they all have kids. In Venezuela and Bolivia, they all have kids. Um, I mean, that's sort of the thing. Yeah, you know, in the immediate term, there's a risk, and there's no way to mitigate that risk at all. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm worried about. That's well, what I'm worried there's, about. There's that aspect, but also, I mean, what's to stop another budget cut and you're just losing your job that way? Oh, I, 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 I'm fairly, I'm fairly, this job was hard to come by. Mm -hmm. This job was hard to come by. I'm fairly confident that as, as programs dwindle, my job's probably going to go away at some point. Okay. But when you try to do something different, especially in this state, no one is going to hire you without that reference. And I have to, I, I, and a lot of people are stuck in this situation. I have to take care of other human beings. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it, it, for someone waiting on me to do something different, for someone waiting on me to do anything other than educate, for someone waiting on me to organize, um, 
I'm saying there are people in better positions to do so. Like some tenured professors here, but right, right. There are a lot of people that's, in better better that's, positions that's, to do I mean, so, that's, but that's, they're comfortable. That's obviously one they're of the comfortable. Problem. That's one of the contradictions, though, right? You have all these tenured professors who are essentially sort of leftist liberal leaders, but they don't care about the evidence. It's like they're here, they're gone for the semester. Right? There's sort of revolving door madness, and they're paid pretty much pretty poor the minimum wage in most instances. Mm -hmm. So again, you need to actually branch out to those teachers as well in other departments. I mean, again, that's essentially what we have as a tenured labor structure. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as uh, as long as the the bosses uh, succeed and keep us keeping us divided amongst ourselves, you know, just me. Uh, if I if I can't keep this job, I'm screwed. Um, which is true and valid. I'm not trying to validate that. But as long as that uh, remains the focus of people, uh, yeah, you're right, we're screwed. Uh, um, you know, we have to show, uh, we have to, to organize ourselves uh, uh, as, a, as a group, you know, and have to think beyond uh, ourselves and have to show solidarity with each other. And uh, uh, the reality is, uh, if uh, all, the, all the TAs uh, organize together in a union, um, there's just not a lot that the the, uh, the administration could do to stop it if they wanted to fight, if they could hold their ranks and stay together. Um, that's not easy. Nobody's saying it's easy. Um, but you know, if uh, you don't want to lose your job in a couple of years as the economic crisis deepens, um, maybe it will be the only choice. I, I mean, this is pretty cliche, right? But this is something we need to take to heart. As Mao said, dare to fight, dare to win. Um, if you don't dare to fight, there's not even the possibility that you'll ever win. I'm willing to get, I'm willing to get arrested. I've been harassed. I've been thrown on the ground. I'm willing to do a lot of things, but with good reason. With good reason, there are a lot of people who are really scared to fight. Yeah. No, it's intentional. You know, mm -hmm. um, everybody's uh, uh, the bosses have tried to make everybody too scared to fight, but um, there there are uh, countless examples around the country. Um, you know, even in right to work states. Here's an example: um, SDS uh, uh, in uh, the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Um, there was a, a union, there's a union there called the Amalgamated Transit Workers Union, uh, ATU, um, that uh, is, is organized uh, bus drivers, you know, like a dozen of them. You know? uh, almost all black, almost all women, um, and uh, you know, they joined this union about a year ago, and they, uh, they never, they tried to negotiate the university and had a hard time getting a contract. Um, so uh, finally, uh, you know, they, they connected up with Students for Democratic Society there um, and uh, a national organization that works by for economic justice that was founded very recently. Um, organized uh, national call-in days to call um, the chancellor of the university and said, you've got to, you know, you've got to recognize this workers' union. Um, the, the SDS students uh, got on the buses every day and made speeches to people riding the buses and saying, look, you depend on these people to get to class. They deserve to be treated fairly. They're making nine fifty an hour, whereas uh, they're contracted out to a group called First Transit. And First Transit was getting paid per bus driver fifty dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and they're saying, "Okay, well, you can pay a comparable living wage to these workers, which is the main demand the workers have in their contract struggle." Um, and uh, you know, you know, by building uh, solidarity amongst themselves first and, you know, and bringing themselves together in union, they had a lot to risk. I'm talking about you know, black women in the South mostly. Right to work state, mm -hmm. Alabama, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, by uh, linking that up with the students and, uh, and building a coalition and uh, daring to struggle and daring to win, they did. Uh, you know, like a month or two ago, they uh, negotiated their contract with First Transit. And uh, part of what they got in the contract was a just cause clause that says that um, without giving just cause, nobody can get fired. Um, which means at the end of arbitrary firing, and that means they can't just go in now they've got the contract and fire everybody who's supporting the union. Um, so uh, it was a big fight, and, uh, and it took more than a year. And 
one of the people that, that started it got fired in the beginning of it. And uh, maybe he'll get his job back now. But it's, uh, he certainly has a strong case to take it to the National Labor, Labor Relations Board and, and get it. I don't know what the details of that, that are, but um, you know, I, I think that that's a very clear example of, uh, you know, if you want to get organized and fight, you're going to take a risk, but you can win if you do it right. <laughs>